And I saw him do his splash challenge, and I was like, you know what? I bet I can do that. And then I, I tried it, and I did it, and I was like, man, that was really easy. I bet I can do it with the backflip. Yeah. And so pretty much from there on, I just started getting all these ideas and stuff. What's up, guys? Today's guest is a professional movement athlete known for his insane viral clips. Please welcome to the Jamcast, Mr. Michael Lewis. What's up, man? What's up, man? How are you? Good to see you, brother. Thanks for uh, making the time to do this. I can't believe we snuck it in. Yeah, for sure, man. It was a very convenient opportunity, you know? 100. And uh, for those that don't know, you're currently visiting Los Angeles, or are you uh, visiting like uh, a, a big trip in general? What are you out here for? It's just Los Angeles. I'm just here. I'm at the Senate House right now, okay. and so I'm just kind of hanging out with all the those guys hell yeah and for those that don't know what is the send it house in and where is it roughly you don't have to give the location away but um i mean this guy named elton owns it and i think he owns a channel called like tfi and okay. it's just a really big youtube house pretty much and tiktok house nice. like it's, it's got one of the power rangers from the tiktok power rangers over there and <laughs> I was like, oh, dude, that's pretty sick. I didn't even know you, you were that guy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's super cool. And how did you link up with those guys? Are they just friends that you know from the online social uh, media? I don't world? know if you know, like, Wesley, West Press. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he used to work at Tempest in Dallas. Yeah. And I met him over there. And so I just a group of the Dallas Tempest guys came down here, and I was like, I'm going to hop on that. That is yeah. awesome, man. That's super cool. And so how long are you out here visiting Los Angeles for? Uh, I'm here till Tuesday, so it's been like probably five days. Oh, okay, okay. And were you able to skip out on work, or is it just kind of like a YOLO trip? Just like Yeah, I mean, luckily I got a pretty flexible job. I just coach cheerleaders and do privates and stuff, so, you know, okay. my... My boss is pretty flexible with me. It's okay. Pretty convenient. Yeah. And so, dude, I got to ask, and this is simply because this clip was featured on the Jam Breakdown like a week ago. Uh, there's a clip of you where you are jumping off of a cliff, Aww. and it more so looks like very specifically that there's a trampoline set up on top of a cliff. Where where did that take place at? So that was in Colorado on Cliff Cruise. Okay. Um, it's like a pretty big cliff diving event where they just go to a bunch of different spots and a and a different state every year okay and this year was colorado and yeah we put a, a trampoline up on about a 30 foot uh, cliff and um so i'd only done two jumps before that off the trampoline off the trampoline okay. yeah and this was my first time actually cliff jumping off of cliffs so you know in general in general <laughs> yeah just never done this stuff before no so way. uh yeah i threw a, a front and half out okay and i was like okay this is this is pretty easy yeah. not hard then I throw a triple hope, so front and half out, back out, and I was like, oh, man, I throw this in the gym all the time, and <laughs> I got to rip it in the gym. It was way too easy, and so I was like, you know what? Uh, Ryan Bean was there, and yes. he hit uh, Rudy full full, and I saw it, and I was like, man, I can Rudy full. I can double double. <laughs> We're going to see if I can put it together right now. <laughs> math, and, yeah, right? Acrobatic yeah. math. So I, I got all the twists and the flipping, uh, just a little bit too much twist. So uh, yes. I had to open out early and whew, yeah, we, uh, we saw how We saw the clip. Yeah. So, yeah. so to, uh, obvious question, did you sustain any major injury as a result of that or just soreness? Nah, man, I like, I couldn't breathe for probably two or three minutes straight. <laughs> like it was just like, as soon as I hit, it's like a rock came out of my throat and I had just no air was there and I'm just wheezing and, and sounding like an idiot for probably like two or three minutes. And then after that, I was like, I was good. I could, you know, breathe again. I just swam it off and, and climbed up. And the next day I was like, bruised from the ribs down to my Dang. abs and it was just bruised for probably like a week or two. And so how long ago was that event? Cause the clip was kind of recently posted. It was probably like, Three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Okay, yeah, okay. not not too long. Yeah, not too. And are you still feeling the residual effects? Like three nah, weeks ago. Nah, I'm I'm pretty good now. Like, Damn. it was very weird when it actually happened. Um, it's the weirdest feeling. Like I was poking my abs when I was in the water, and you know normally your abs are hard when you flex them. Well, I was flexing as hard as I could, and it was like jello. Really? Yeah, it was so weird to feel that, and so like I was like, man, did I just like shift everything <laughs> in my stomach bro what is going your organs on organs are right everywhere now? yeah that's pretty much your main thought like i was like oh man that just burst my lung yeah. like that that was my main thought 100 right percent, bro and yeah but luckily i was i was fine after that so bro i have so many questions about your life but i have to ask you about this specific <laughs> thing so one how in the hell did y'all get a trampoline up there did you assemble it at the top or build yeah. it and carry we no actually they may have 
They they assembled it at the top, yeah. Okay. Because we got like two tramps sent to us from Akron or whatever, okay. and yeah, we just brought the box up there, built it up there, and then we actually had another one that we brought to another spot too. Damn. But and yeah. how, how long does it take to break it down? Like, honestly, it's like super fast. It's really? Like, okay. Yeah, it was like just spring, spring, springs. Pretty and much, then, yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, like the the springs were pretty much put together. You pretty much just pop out the sticks and then we would just carry it around like that no way yeah was, that's pretty dope it was pretty convenient honestly okay. I'm, I'm probably gonna get one from back home <laughs> hey you know? all right and then you you also just mentioned it was like the first time jumping off of cliffs yeah okay have you ever done stuff like that from height like bridge jumping or anything close or generally um, speaking not i mean there's this spot in dallas uh we call it the ranch and okay. it's got like these two platforms in this tree uh, a lot of people have seen it i'm sure but okay um, it basically, my friend just really got into cliff diving like last year during when COVID hit pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And so he had this giant tree in a pond in his backyard Okay. and he built two platforms on it. One at like probably 25 feet, the other one at like 33. Okay. And so, um, we basically just, that's where I started with my cliff jumping pretty Crazy. much. Like I think I jumped off of probably one cliff before that in my life. And it was probably like a. 25 foot cliff or something 100 and it was just like a a front half you know (laughs) and that's like it so that was like the extent of my actual cliff diving but i did that one time i think at my friend's house okay and so i learned a little bit that's how i learned how to dodge dive then death dive yeah yeah death dive. so that's where i started practicing and then i bridge jump one other time before that okay on like a 20 foot bridge. I mean, people don't realize it is a skill in itself. Like yeah. people just assume cause you can do a flip on the ground, you could flip off of heights, but if anything, it's, it's, it's more difficult cause you have to time it perfectly yeah. to account for the extra time. It, it's a ve- it's weird yeah. because like you want to really like when you're thinking of a really hard skill, like when I threw the Rudy full full, I was thinking like, man, I got to rip this skill to be able to land it on my feet. And when I threw it, I like I overdid it like I, I over twisted so hard and I was like dang like that taught me right there I gotta relax on yeah. cliffs like yeah. really really relax on cliffs and so yeah you just have to be super casual when you're up there and that's really it yeah I can't even imagine adding in the uh, the additional variable of a trampoline because it gives you oh, added height because most times you're just trying to fall into your flip so to speak you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying but yeah like, yeah you, you should have seen some of the wipeouts oh, I bet. a lot of people you know they they think oh I'm just gonna straight jump off the trampoline because that's the easiest thing you know it's yeah. not as scary and most people that don't have control over their body, you know, oh my you get gosh, thrown off so, even more. Yeah, right? yeah, so they hit the trampoline and they go head first and they start flailing in the air and stuff. And oh my gosh, dude, there's probably like at least three belly flops from <sighs> from just straight jumps, Brutal. belly flopping off of it. But yeah, dude, it was. It's always funny though. That's right. crazy. And so and so I got to ask this. This is not to put you on blast, but I just wanted to see if there's a correlation. I remember there being a post on your Instagram um, not too long ago where you're doing like handstands on the edge of a cliff in Sedona. Mm-hmm. And in the parentheses you wrote that you actually don't even like heights really. <laughs> so I just yeah. wanted to know, is that like something that's true and resonates? Like, are you not a fan yeah, of Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, like when I would be up on those like 35 foot cliffs, 40 foot cliffs, I'd always get like this nervousness in mm-hmm. my gut. Yeah. But dude, I can tell you like, as soon as I belly flop that 30 foot as hard as possible, like whenever I go up to those cliffs now and I look down, I'm just chilling now. Ah. Like it, it's a lot more relaxed, but, um, no, nah, in general though, I really hate heights. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know, there's like a spot in, um, Malibu or okay. something like that. And it's like a, a cliff diving spot. But yeah. Yeah. You have to yeah. like, walk past this like 120 foot dam and like it's just like a straight drop on the right of it yeah oh my gosh <laughs> terrifying all, all every, like everyone in the group so always like sitting on the ledge like dangling their feet looking off and i'm like for real i'm yeah. good bro what man it, it's definitely something that's not uh not everyone is accustomed to you know yeah, what i'm saying no. like it's definitely something you have to build up to mm-hmm. unless you're just naturally born with it but yeah, fear yeah. training is something you have to build up to. It's crazy. And I know some people that just don't have that fear. Right. And, like, they have, like, no body control. But they'll just, like, huck a gainer from, like, like I, I know this girl named Sayla. I don't, you may know her. She's a okay. TikToker. Okay. And she was at Cliff Cruise. And, man, I watched her learn a gainer in Tempest probably, like, a month before. Okay. And it was, like, it was some scary-looking gainers <laughs> at first. And, like, a lot of necks landing on the airbag. And she somewhat got it. And by the time I saw her at Cliff Cruise, she threw it off like 
the 20, then like the 30, wow. then the 35. And then like they went to a different spot and I went home after that. I didn't go to the other spot. And she hucked it off like a 50 foot spot. Wow. And then like two days ago, she just hucked a 70 foot gainer. And I'm like, dude. Dude, that's crazy. I don't even know if I would do That's that. what I'm saying. 70 feet is high, it's bro. It's high. And it's high. And she landed almost perfect, but she sat just a little bit, but was bleeding, bro. I was going to ask, Straight did up. she destroy herself? Straight up bleeding, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. It, yeah. It looked nasty. But. People don't understand, like, one of the biggest things about the height is uh, is not always that it's going to be, like, that you're going to, like, hurt your neck or something like that. Mm. There's so many other variables. I know people have blown the bottoms of their feet out. You, yeah. Some people, I have friends that wear shoes on purpose from heights, you know? You, yeah, sometimes you have to. Like, even me, I think I hit, like, a... 50 and when i hit the water with my feet hard like yeah. you feel that yeah. and so i don't know like how people do like hundreds and stuff like that's just that's why if you guys ever watch like uh, olympic diving from like the platforms they mm. have the they have machines that are blowing bubbles underneath to help yeah, soften yeah. and disperse the water those help so much so like, much <laughs> i wish i had that when i belly <laughs> flopper oh my gosh that would help so much can't but. really get those out in the ocean all the time though no though. definitely not but it, i wish i could at least learn on those types of things you know that would be sick so obviously your background is not in cliff diving and no. flips at height. So what is your actual background in movement and how did your movement journey begin? I'm actually like an ex gymnast. So okay. my parents have been gymnastics coaches since way before oh, I was wow. born. So you had no yeah. choice almost pretty much. Like I was born, I think like a couple of days later I was in the gym. Yeah. And so I grew up my entire life being in a gymnastics gym. And so Damn. it was just kind of in my blood you know, uh, I don't remember a time when I couldn't flip. Wow. So, okay. yeah, like even when I was like three years old, we used to have like this, you know, two story balcony in yeah. our gym and there's like this, this rail on it. And then on the other side of the rail is the foam pit. Okay. And I was three years old, man. And I'm like, Hey dad, I can jump off of this. And he was like, jump off what? And like, I like, come, I was like, come watch. And I like ran away and I like ran up all the stairs and stuff, you know, he's like, Michael, where'd you go? Yeah. And we had like a high bar over the foam pit. So I like he thought I was gonna jump off the high bar. And I was like, Dad, look. And like pop up over the rail. I'm like, watch. And I just jump off. And yeah, I was like, like, crazy. Like, like I don't even remember doing that. But my dad's like, no, dude, that is like one of the most like prevalent things I can remember of you doing when you were that age. Totally. Like, Cause you were just a psycho. That is wild, bro. And so with that being said, like, uh, what, what level did you get up to? Did you actually do formal team gymnastics or were yeah, you just always yeah. at the gym? I, I went up to level 10. Okay. And so like stopped just before elite. I was like junior Olympic level. Uh, I, I actually won a gold medal nationals level nine on vault. Wow. Which is kind of cool. I guess, you know, that's, that's. Pretty hard, actually. Yeah, 100. And I only ask this because, like, so personally, I was born into a family of, like, famous martial artists. So mm. it was the same thing. Since I was born, they were already stretching me. I was at yeah, the gym as soon as yeah. I could walk. Like, yeah, same thing, competing at three. Did you feel a lot of pressure growing up having your parents as your parents and as your coaches? And did you ever feel, like, burnout? Uh, Yes and no. I mean, I also had, like, this Brazilian coach, and he actually lived with us. He's, he's pretty much like my uncle. Okay. He's, He's been with my family for a very long time. And so he was like the boys gymnastics coach and my oh. parents were the guy or the girls gymnastics coaches. And so like they didn't always coach me, but mm -hmm. like, you know, obviously they were always there at the gym. Yeah, so yeah. they would get on to me and stuff. But like, I wouldn't say I ever got like burnt out on it or anything, but it was definitely a lot more intense for me just because I was their son, yeah, you know, of like, I can remember things where I had like, <laughs> my dad's probably gonna be mad at me for this one, but uh, you know what a strap bar is on high yeah, bar? of course. So he would strap me in and he would take like a toothpick and put it on the back of my leg or like something pointy and like tape on the back so that you have to when, I would, straight. when I would do giants, yeah, I could not bend my knees no matter what. Yo. And so like, he, it would be like things like that, that he could do with me. Just that he couldn't because, do with the public. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. I was his son. So definitely I learned in some very uh, extreme ways sometimes. But dude, it definitely like, it helped learn a lot. I bet, man. Like body control is just, it's second nature now, pretty yeah. much. Pretty much everything. So. And so did you like excel at one thing? Obviously you said you got a golden vault. Did you have like a favorite uh, apparatus or was floor something you lean towards? Pro, it's pretty much floor and vault. Yeah. Okay. I just love tumbling so much. Okay. And, uh, 
like I like high bar and stuff, but like hated dismounting, you yeah. know, just releases, not my thing, okay. terrified me every time. But um, yeah, I would, I would probably say I was always just really, really strong on floor and vault and everything else I was decent at, but those are just my preferred ones. Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously going on with the years, I ended up picking it back up again. So. Totally. And so what age are you when you quit level 10? Like how, how old are you at that age? Man, I think I was... 16 okay because i was like during um, high school i did freshman year of high school okay. i did soccer and i did gymnastics wow. and that was like i would wake up at like 5 a.m soccer practice at 6 a.m totally. you know go to school get out of school at like 2 30 go straight to gymnastics holy shit you know, get home at like nine yeah yeah you know after doing no that life. for a full year i was like Ooh, where's my life and yeah. so yeah pretty much uh picked between the two i ended up choosing soccer actually wow and yeah, I just, shortly after I quit gymnastics, the gym ended up closing down, and okay. then uh, I pursued soccer, and I tried to go pro in soccer, actually. No I, way. And so, yeah. did you start in high school, or did you play soccer outside of high school before, like, clubs and stuff? I mean, I played, like, soccer. Like, like rec, you know. AYSO or yeah, rec type like stuff, yeah. In, okay. Some indoor stuff. Yeah, Occasionally, yeah. I joined, like, an outdoor team and play for just, like, fun, but I didn't really start playing until high school, and... I ended up making, like, the freshman team, you know, sophomore year made, like, the, the junior team or whatever, and then I made varsity my junior, and, but then I was actually pretty good, wow, and that's then, crazy. yeah, I, I started getting better and better, and then um, I had, like, the world's longest soccer throw-in, yes. and so that was pretty convenient to have in soccer, and so um, pretty much with that, I was like, man, I could probably go pro with this stuff, and so I started, I went to college for a year with it. Then I decided I might try and go pro. So I went to Spain for a little while. I went to Denmark for a little while. Wow. I just kind of traveled around to other teams and pretty much see if I could fit in anywhere. And by then, though, I was already posting Instagram videos and stuff. Okay. And I kind of just enjoyed it way more, just making videos, coaching, you know, doing private lessons and stuff. So I decided to just kind of cut the soccer. And wow. yeah, now I'm, now I'm here. Crazy, in California so man, that's crazy and so you kind of alluded to it right there and that's something I want to talk about but do you still have the official world record yeah I wow. do Wow. and so can you just let people know what that's for uh, officially so it's like the world's longest male soccer throw-in yes and so I do like the front handspring throw-in so yeah. I cheat you know whatever use my flipping ability and I think I threw it like it was almost 60 meters. I know that. Yeah, it's like it was like 100 or 196.3 feet or okay. something like that. And so, yeah, it's like just shy of 60 yards. But Damn. And how did you discover that you could do this and, and at a level where you thought you should go for a record? That, that was my dad, uh, definitely. Because, you know, gymnastics background, We when I started playing soccer, he put a mini indoor soccer field in the gymnastics gym. Okay. And so I would just always be in there just shooting, you know, dribbling, practicing. And then one day he was like, hey, you should try and throw the ball like this. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, threw it at the wall and just like destroyed the wall with it. And I was like, that was hard. Wow, yeah. that was yeah. crazy. And so we ended up trying it outside and I basically just threw it across almost the entire field. And when I did that, he was like, okay, you got to use this, especially when you go to high school you know, you're going to kill with it. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that that's weird. pretty much where I, I decided to do it. And yeah, but then, you know, vine was a thing back then. Yeah. And this, uh, we had a, a high school varsity game. Okay. And one of the var varsity girls, she recorded me doing a flip throw and I ended up scoring on it. Wow. And so like I threw it, it was probably like a, a 60 yard throw and it just went up and the goalie, touched it and it went in behind so it counts him. yeah yeah and so it counted and she posted that on vine and it got like 30 or 40 million views wow. and so that like blew up and when it was blowing up and everything everyone was just like oh you need to beat the world record like you need to do it and then i looked up the world record and in that video alone i had already beat the world record yeah, and so i was like tell. oh I really should beat the world record. No way. And yeah, so that, that's where I got the idea for that one. Okay. And so do you have to, like, file a formal attempt, or how do you go about getting a Guinness record? Yeah, I mean, you can either, like, call on a judge, which normally costs money, though, and I didn't want to do that. So um, 
they have it to where like you basically have to have a bunch of different angles mm -hmm. of the you know attempts uh just recording everything uh just has to be really good quality you have to have official like referees out there like um we had there's this thing called dallas cup for soccer mm -hmm. and it was going on that weekend and so we pretty much had referees that came from europe come help with the judging for just a little bit and so we got the world record done just like that and yeah just it had to be super official pretty much yeah but yeah it's pretty much you just make it as official as possible send it in and and hope it's good enough. And so do you get anything as like recognition, like a certificate or like, yeah, yeah, I get a little, you know, plaque world record, which is pretty cool. You know, I always think, you know, Oh, it's a world record. But yeah. then I also think sometimes like, wait a minute, dude, you do have a world record. Though. Yeah, that dude. is pretty crazy in like, the whole world, man. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. When you, when you think about it, like nobody else in the entire world is beating that. Yeah. That's like, Oh man, that is pretty crazy. Actually. So do you think anyone will ever, be able to break it and if they do would you try to re-break it man i'll tell you if someone breaks i will be extremely impressed okay like was really that your really maximum impressed. do you think that one that you broke it on i mean i know i've definitely thrown it like maybe a little bit further a few times in my life but like um i think like a no yeah like a year or two after when i went to denmark um they actually set up um a big like gathering to where all these fans came to the field and just uh, a TV crew showed up, uh, news crew showed up, like just a bunch of people showed up basically to come watch me try to re-break my world record. Okay. And I'll tell you, man, when you don't beat your own world record in front of a huge crowd man. with TV crews and everything, you're like, oh, man, that's tough. That's but tough. like, I think I ended up like four inches short on my oh, best attempt, it's not which, bad. you know, not bad, yeah, but yeah, like, you're within range. So it's not like, Oh, that was a fluke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't like embarrass myself, but you know, obviously I wanted to beat it and I thought I'd be able to beat it. Just like really trying to go for it. Cause like when I did it the first time, like I was, you know, hucking the ball, but I don't know if I was like giving it everything I got. Yeah, yeah. And so I really tried to give it everything I got. And there was like absolutely no win that day at all to help me. So, you know, obviously that didn't help, but um, yeah, I ended up falling like four inches short of it though on my best try. Okay. And so if someone beats me, whew, I'll be impressed. For yeah, sure. that is crazy. Cause I, I think the guy that had the world record before me, he held it for like 10 years. And how, do you know how far you beat it by? Like how many, I think he hit like 53 meters. Wow. I hit like 59. Yeah, yours was almost or 63 60. yards and I hit 59. Holy crap. Yeah. So a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely smoked it. Like when you watch the video of me do it, um, there's like these orange cones, yeah. which was his world record. And the ball just like sails past it Dang. in the videos. Like every time you're like, oh my gosh, that was the world record. And yeah. So like it definitely wasn't close, but. That's wild, man. And so it's just crazy to see because I had no idea that you tried to pursue a career in professional soccer. Um off the back end of that, you kind of mentioned how you started posting on Instagram slowly, and that's how you're kind of where you're at right now. Mm. Uh, for those that do follow you, they probably wouldn't recognize your government name. I said at the beginning of the jam cast, they probably recognize you as Mike Does Flips. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so with that being said, uh, how did you get back into what you're doing right now, I guess, which is focusing more on the acrobatic side of your life? So, I mean... This is kind of really cool to me. Um, I, sh I know you know uh, Flip Like Z. Of course, um, bro. Z's bro. around. Bro. So I'm sure you remember when he did the water challenge, the splash challenge. Yes, just sir. The very casual one, the very first one. I saw that, and by then I was like, man, I watch all these guys do these flips because I had basically just found him, and I had just started watching his videos okay. and Tanner Witt's videos. Okay. And... I was just watching them for probably like a few weeks and I, I had decided, you know what? I can probably post videos like this and people might enjoy it. You know, yeah. I, might, I might as well try. And I saw him do his splash challenge and I was like, you know what? I bet I can do that. And then I, I tried it and I did it and I was like, man, that was really easy. I bet I can do it with the backflip. Yeah. And so pretty much from there on, I just started getting all these ideas and stuff, but it was like a hundred percent inspired from like watching like that's awesome, z and bro. watching tanner Witt and stuff so that is crazy and yeah. so I, I know exactly that clip you're talking about with the backflip when you did on the edge because it was featured mm -hmm. on our show did that clip take off right away it 
it did pretty good because like you know obviously like i think z's video got like 20 million views or yeah. something on like tiktok but i think mine got like 2 million but that kind of just like jump started my like career yeah. i guess um because like sports center picked it up and like all these like really big yeah. uh outlets and stuff picked it up and started posting it and i grew from like I, I it was originally my personal account and I just kind of changed the name a little bit okay. and decided I'm, I'm gonna go for it like this and so I had like a thousand followers with like all my normal friends and like I posted that one video and I think like just like two days later maybe I was at like six thousand followers yeah and so like I was like dang you know I gotta just just keep Stay posting videos and stuff yeah. and so yeah I just I kept doing different styles of it and everything and just like Sometimes it would pop off on TikTok and sometimes it would pop off on Instagram yeah. and just like it was kind of just constantly going off and and like Sports Center would just keep posting and stuff and yeah dude I don't even know how it happened but I ended up at like I think I got like 71,000 followers right now or something yeah. on Instagram so yeah it it grew fast out of nowhere pretty much but 100% and since the the flip like Z the splash challenge mm. you've moved on to tons of other different challenges uh, mm. that we featured tons of times um, some where you're dipping your head in a water bowl some where you're dipping Oreos and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, wh where do you come up obviously they're stemming from original challenges how do you come up with your variations man it's just like sometimes I'll just be coaching and I would just kind of think of something and I'll just kind of like throw a little trick on the floor and be like, yeah, I, I think this will probably be possible. Okay. And, and so like things just kind of like pop up in my head, you know, or even sometimes I'll just be driving down the road and I'll like see like a waterfall with like a little pool next to it. And I'll just be like, that's pretty much how I find most of my spots. I just see like a really cool spot and I'm like, you know, I've been kind of thinking of this one idea. I might just go over there and try this right now. And, no and so, yeah, I just go try and hit it pretty much. And, yeah, I just had a lot of really, really random ideas that ended up, I guess, turning out pretty cool, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, And when you're out there, are you filming these clips alone? Do you have a cameraman? Are you tripoding it? I would say most of the time I'd be by myself. Yeah, I'd, that's like, what it seems like. Yeah, yeah there's like occasional, probably one or two videos where someone would help me record, but um, normally any of like the, the splash challenges and stuff, I would do by myself just because sometimes it would just take a little bit to set up and like, I'd prep a little bit and, you know, I hate like keeping my friends sitting yeah, there for like, you same. know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes before I even start clear. trying yeah. it. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just, I normally do it by myself when it's that kind of stuff. So. And then in general, are you someone that trains alone? Or are you someone that actually thrives off of being around other people? I, I mean, I love being around other people. That's kind of like why I'm, I'm traveling more now Makes and sense. I'm out here and stuff. So, um, I, I normally end up training by myself and, I got super, super bored of that fast though. And so that's why like, I ended up at Tempest over there and Tempest is like a uh, 45, 50 minute drive for me. Oh, but wow. I go like, not every day. I probably go like three days a week at least. I try to get there. And so uh, I only started going there just to basically train with people, be meet, around, meet people and stuff, be around the sport and stuff, you know, because okay. back where I am, like I coach in a uh, very, very small like your floor yeah that's the entire gym no way yeah that's the entire gym wow and so okay. it's a very very small private cheer gym and the roof is like maybe a little bit shorter than that roof oh, right there man, and no way. yeah so uh i've hit my feet on the ceiling twice and like you know one of them i hit my feet doing a layout just straight down on my head the oh, other one i hit way. and luckily kept flipping but like like, I can't even really train, train. Yeah, there, you can't even you know? max out your skills. Yeah, not even close. So Crazy, yeah. bro. And it, so for those that don't know, where are you located and where do you call home? Uh, Dallas, pretty okay. much. I, I just say Dallas, Texas. Yeah. It, I, I kind of go between that area. Um, but yeah, the, the gym I coach at is in like, it's called the Colony, Texas, but okay. that is basically non-existent on okay. a map. So, you know. And just because I have no idea about uh, distances in Texas, how far are you away from like the Austin scene or like the Tumble Tech scene and stuff? Austin, I mean, I can get there in probably like four hours, four and a half so hours. it's a whole like different community. Yeah, pretty much. And okay. I actually like in Austin, I know a lot of the cliff jumping side now. Like the, I know a pretty big group of guys down there. But I mean, for tricking and stuff, uh, I think I know like Jared Ludy. Yeah, and of course. Uh, that's, that's pretty it, much right? it, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, so funny, that's pretty yeah. much the end of my knowledge on it's that so one, funny because so. I just had Jared on here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, with I mean, with that being said, like, 
obviously your account shows a lot of the viral clips that you do, which is mm -hmm. mostly challenge based and stuff like that. Um, but you also like throw in elements of parkour with wall flips. And obviously we see some passes on the floor with tricking. Mm -hmm. uh, do you focus on those like also, or like, do you just delve into them a little bit? Like, um, I mean, honestly, like a lot of the videos I post, like the challenge and stuff, like obviously that's like not the stuff I casually do yeah um those are just kind of things they just kind of pop up in my head and i'm like oh you know I'm, I'm gonna go try and hit this you know it'll it'll be pretty cool to record and stuff okay. and so that's just kind of how i do those kind of things but like honestly i don't record almost anything i do uh, like okay. I, i'm really bad about recording myself i should record more but like i tumble all the time like i, I basically mainly tumble and stuff i i train like air awareness i work a lot of stunting stuff right now okay. like like I'm, I'm really trying to get into doubling and and doing stuff like that for movies. And okay. So I've just been I've been training a lot of stunting and stuff like that mainly, um, but yeah, I just I just don't really record much of what I do. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think a lot of people like sometimes I don't know what to post on Instagram. I guess yeah, just yeah, because yeah. you know I th I normally post all these challenge videos and everything, but like I normally flip a lot too. So like. Lately, I've been posting more of what I actually do and stuff like the cliff diving and stuff. Yeah. I've been getting more into that. So pretty much just anything I do now, I'm trying to trying to record and, and see what people enjoy, you know? Yeah, I feel like that's something that's uh, a lot of people are guilty of, like for some reason, especially someone like you that a lot of your clips are solo filmed anyways. Mm -hmm. It's like if you have to set it up alone, sometimes it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, that and like with posting, you know, a lot of people would just post everything they do. Yeah. I for some reason, unless it's something like crazy, pretty much, I just don't feel like posting yeah, it, yeah. you know? I If it's not like something really, really cool, I just end up never posting those videos. Totally. And so I probably have like thousands of videos in my camera roll and it's just all like things I just deem average in my head. So not, I just end yeah, up not, not post worthy. Using. Yeah, exactly, so. That's crazy. And so what's your uh, normal training schedule like back home? Are you someone that trains nonstop sunset, like sunrise to sunset, or you um, train a couple of days a week? I mean, I can't deny that I'm pretty lazy sometimes. Okay. I, I should train probably more often, mainly like I don't lift weights and stuff enough. Okay. Like um, I try to stretch as much as possible just to stay safe with you know my joints and, and muscles and everything. But I mean, normally I'll try to train in the mornings a little bit and then I'll kind of just take a break, uh, do anything I need to do, uh, before I go to work. And I'll normally work like maybe three thirty to like eight o'clock at night okay. and just coach, do classes, private lessons. And, uh, normally after that is when I'll go to Tempest cause they have like night sessions and everything. Yeah. And so I'll go like, I think eight ish to 11 ish. And then I just get home and <laughs> pass, pass out. out. Yeah. yeah. 100%. How's your body holding up after everything that you've gone through? Like, do you have to do maintenance or do you feel pretty good? Dude, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm 23 and I feel old a okay. lot of the time. That you was know? my question. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause back during gymnastics and stuff, I would just five hour practices every single day, mm -hmm. nothing, you know? Yep, and yep. now two hours, three hours practice the next day. I'm like, Oh, I feel this. Yes. I feel this way more than I should. But that's definitely why I know I lack on the, like, lifting side of things. Yeah, that, just that the cross-training side. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No, that's super cool. It's good for me to hear, though, because as someone that's getting older, it's good to hear someone like yourself that's 23 that's like, I'm going through it, too. Dude, yeah. you yeah, Definitely, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I've learned that I got to stretch. I've got to properly warm up. Yes. And I've just got to actually work my muscles out properly now. 100. So, yeah, it's been a good learning experience. Just, you know, very small injuries all the time. Yeah. For, for no reason. Like, I'd, like, pull a hip or, or like, you know, just something would just tweak just a little bit. And I'd be like, dude, okay. Yeah. I got to stop being stupid. I got to <laughs> I gotta do some squats. 100. I got to do some stretches. You know, I, I got to stop being lazy. But. Yeah. And now we kind of talked about this off camera, but it's, like, one of the things that I always ask people before I introduce them is, like, what they would like to be categorized as or introduced as. Mm -hmm. And with yours, it's kind of hard to put you in a box. So, like, do you consider yourself, like a tumbler more so than a tricker more so a parkour athlete or do you just consider yourself like a movement athlete in general because you do it all i mean yeah i just i just say movement honestly just okay. because i really do do pretty much like everything like I, I have groups of friends who do like straight parkour and like i'll just go join them and i'll just go do like straight parkour stuff or like a lot of the time it's more like free running type stuff mm -hmm. like i just enjoy flipping jumping off of things 
throwing myself off buildings, you know, just like I, I enjoy that kind of stuff a lot too. But um, yeah, then uh, I do cliff diving, you know, like exactly. I, I just pretty much try and do everything. I just, I love being active and just challenging myself in pretty much any physical way I can. And so, yeah, it, I definitely live an interesting life with yeah, that stuff. Man. And so with that being said, with so many different like things that you're into, uh, is there anyone out there that you still watch for like inspiration or is there anyone that you oh, continue dude. to watch? I mean, if you have any decent following, probably I'm probably following you. I'm probably <laughs> watching you, you okay. know, like I, I try to keep up with as much of the community as possible. Just all sorts of things, you know, from cliff diving to like tricking to, you know, challenges. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, I, I look for anything I can really. And, you know, I always have my ideas, but like I said, I never really know what to post. So watching other people kind of helps me, I guess, figure out what ideas I have that are kind of similar that might work as well. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, honestly though, I don't, I don't use social media as much as I probably should. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're trying to be, you know, on social media, you should probably use it quite a bit, but uh, I don't know. I use it every once in a while. I'll just hop on, you know, check up on the homies, yeah. see how they're doing, like their videos, totally. you know, and, and see what's up. But yeah, I don't, I don't use it as much as I probably should. I've definitely fallen off myself. There was a point where I used to post like every other day. Like oh yeah. Every day. And now like I looked at my feet, I'm like, I haven't posted in two and a half weeks. Like, yep. yep. Whoops. Exactly. <laughs> That's pretty much where I'm at most of the time. And, but that mostly stems from me not recording myself when I do my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I, I just don't do enough with the cameras, but. Oh Yeah. And so I only have to ask this because sometimes it's a logical progression for uh, for most people once they get to like a certain level and following. Uh, do you ever think that competition is something that's in your future or do you not get uh, intrigued by stuff like that? I mean, the thought of it's crossed my mind, you know, obviously like um, Art of Motion. I really debated on going there. You know, like Jared showed up there. Yeah. Uh, Franco, my friend, other friends and stuff, they showed up there too. And you know, they all had a blast there and Jared even did pretty good. You know, yeah. he even, he even got Made to actually finals, compete yeah. against, you know, big names and everything. And so, you know, when I see friends like that who I've trained with before and, and you know, I do very similar stuff and everything, I, you know, kind of debate in my head, man, maybe, you know, maybe I should try this just, you know, just see what happens. But, 100%. you know, I kind of just, I guess I'm going with the flow right now and I'm pretty much out here to experiment see what's up see what i want to be doing and everything so 100 percent. yeah I, I definitely think though soon i'll be doing more like stunting stuff okay and, and and trying to get involved with more of that kind of stuff so do you foresee yourself staying in texas uh indefinitely or do you think that you would ever make a move i mean if the move was like necessary i probably would but i mean i love my coaching job i have uh you know, I love the kids I get to coach and everything. And so if I can, I would love to keep doing that. And kind of like, you know, you, you just kind of take off here and yeah, there. And you're, yeah. you're gone here and there. I, I kind of want to keep it similar to that and just be able to take off whenever I need to, which, you know, my, my job is luckily really flexible like that. And, and my boss like loves me. So we, we work together on that kind of stuff. And yeah, so I don't know. I, I think I would like to stay there. Okay. But, um, if I have to, I, I would definitely move yeah. for it. But. Hell yeah. And so we're almost like almost ending out 2020, uh, 2021, which is insane to think about. It's yeah. almost fall right now, heading into winter. Uh, do you have any other events or any other trips planned out for the duration of the year? Or are you going to head back home to finish it out? Man, I'm going to head back home. And if something pops up, I'll probably do it. Like um, I was actually supposed to do some stunting gig uh, like next Friday. Oh, but okay. I got to be vaccinated for that. Uh, and so, yeah, I unfortunately have to go home, get vaccinated, and then um, see what happens eligible. then. Yeah. So, yeah, hoping I get another opportunity to get into something. But, you know. 100%. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, you never know, man. At least you already have a direction that you kind of want to lean towards. And mm -hmm. at least you have, like, some uh, area to, to aim. And if, you know, if you ever have questions feel free to hit us up dog that's what yeah, we're here dude, for so. definitely i know y'all got you know you, you have your stuff together here <laughs> you know what you're doing so. yeah 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 is, yeah my my name is not travis does flips it should be travis does stunts you know what i'm dude, saying yeah for sure bro <laughs> hell I yeah mean, that's pretty much how i feel like most of the time when i'm doing stuff i'm like 
throwing myself off buildings, you know, and like, you know, just flat backing on mats Bum. and everything, and like belly flopping things, just like basically like terrifying people. Yeah. And like, man, what should I do with this? And then I'll watch people, you know, get thrown through windows and stuff in movies, and I'm like, that looks awesome. Yeah. 100. Like, that is the exact type of things. I want to do. Yeah, and it's so. crazy. I, I growing up, like I was so fascinated by the same things from Power Rangers to Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and you're always crazy. like, how do I do that? That's what I want to do. And it's cool that there is a possibility to do that. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can't be Superman, but you can be the guy that plays Superman. You know? Exactly. So. Right. That'd be, that'd be sick. You know? Hell yeah. I man. got no problem with that. Yeah, man. And so with that being said, man, this is a question that I always ask uh, people before we get out of here. And I'm curious to see what your answer is because you're so young and at such a pivotal age with, with a bright future ahead of you, mm -hmm. um, where do you see yourself five years from now? And then where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Uh, man, five years from now, or from now, definitely. I want to be involved in the stunt business no matter what. Okay. Uh, at least doing, you know, maybe even just like commercials or something like, like small things, but I want to at least be involved in it by then. Um, definitely going to have my own place. Okay. Uh, I'm already kind of, on track for that right now uh trying to get that ready get that set up and everything um don't know exactly where it will be yet but definitely gonna happen within five years so okay. um that's definitely on the table um and yeah pretty much just grow my brand from there um just keep doing what i'm doing right now um seeing what people like seeing what i like you know kind of just figure myself out you know yeah, see yeah. see what's up pretty much doing what most people are in the social media age, just, you know, figuring out where I'm at, what I want to do. So, yeah, we live in a cool time where, uh, a lot is possible in very non-traditional methods. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yep. might as well give it an attempt. Yeah. It's very, you know, you got to try, yeah. right. When you're, when you're young, might as well. Yeah. You know, it's just all these stories of people who, who get themselves started off of just the smallest things, you know, 100% just hoping for it crazy to think about man i mean even yourself one one little watching a video of flip like z inspired you to post your own and now you have a platform yeah you, know, you man, didn't have I, like might, two years ago. I might have a stunting opportunity now just because of that you know it's crazy it's, right? it's crazy i definitely gotta thank him it was so cool man i got to meet him last night and that's like i was gonna ask you if know, you had the chance to meet him yeah yeah i got to meet him last night man he just flew back in from yeah, from boston yeah from boston i was because i was supposed to go fly out and see him because he was over there with sean and stuff so yeah, yeah yeah so they were all hanging out down there yeah and he got back last night and got to say hey to him. You know, it was Richie's birthday, yep. so we were chilling, all hanging out and everything. And it's cool. It was cool. It's you know, crazy, right? It's yeah. crazy when you like get to meet an idol, and then you're like, oh, you know, we're all the same kind of people. It's a person, you know? right? <laughs> yeah, it's like we all do the exact same stuff yeah. all day long. So you we know. just live in different cities, and yep, yeah, but much. we all put our pants on the same way. So pretty much, yeah, it's pretty cool though. Hell yeah, man! Well, yo, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this, especially yeah. with the limited timetable. People have no idea, but you fly out of here in like 36 hours from now. So yeah, pretty much, we, dude. It was just it was so cool, you know. Obviously. I watch this all the time, you Thanks, know, bro. being featured on it would be so cool and everything. I'd always be like, oh, you know, they just put me on jam. <laughs> Look at me right there. That's me. And like now I get to like be in here. That That's just that's even cooler. It's you know? the most amazing thing about the Internet and social media. It has made the world that much more small. Yeah, you know? dude, it really has. And even like coming here, like I've seen like five people from Texas here. Totally. Yeah. Just on this trip alone. Yeah. And I'll be like, dude, what are the odds? Like we're just like all out here at the same time. Yeah. Doing stuff, you know? Yeah, it's it crazy, so man. cool, man. It's so cool. Well, I know you're just out here visiting, but who knows? Maybe we'll see you again in a, on a future visit, or maybe you'll become part of the community in, Hopefully, the, in the future. Man. Hopefully. I definitely hope I uh, end up out here at least a few times. Yes. Uh, I'm definitely going to be coming out here to train and stuff a bunch. So. Hell yeah, man. We'll have to make that happen. For so, sure. Um, so, yo, before we get out of here, can you just look in that camera and let people know where they can continue to follow you and stay up to date with your own personal journey? Yeah, man. Uh, you can just follow me on Instagram, uh, Mike Does Flips, or on TikTok, Mike Does Flips. That's, that's pretty much where I post mainly. So, you know. Appreciate it, man. Hell yeah. Yo, with that being said, guys, please be sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe for brand new episodes each and every week. Join us every Monday for Jam Breakdowns and every Friday for brand new Jamcast, interviewing influential members of the movie community like Mr. Michael Lewis himself. So with that being said, guys, got to give one more very special thank you. Thanks for coming through, homie. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, appreciate you having me, man. This has been awesome. Hell yeah. Have a safe trip back, and I will see you in the future, bro. Appreciate it, my guy. Hell yeah. And as always, guys, coming at you, coming through, I'm your host, Travis Wong. Thanks for joining us here on another Jamcast. Until next time, we'll see you all soon. Peace.